It's a real pleasure to welcome you to Bryant University. As Lorna mentioned, I'm a professor in the Department of English and Cultural Studies in the College of Arts and Sciences. I received my master's degree from Marquette University in British and American Literatures and my PhD from the University of Washington. My background in cultural studies and international literature has paved the way for me to develop course offerings in the Republic of Ireland, in Northern Ireland, and in London, England. I've taught courses on film, narrative, and I'm currently teaching a course on ghost stories and Gothic fiction. This morning, I'd like to talk a little about Bryant's commitment to liberal arts and business learning. Bryant is decidedly interdisciplinary, linking not only business and arts and sciences to each other, but linking faculty and disciplines within and across the colleges. You may have noticed that when you toured the campus that the faculty suites are not organized like faculty offices on other campuses. Most campuses organize their faculty by departments, but at Bryant we are mixed together such that different disciplines meet and talk to each other on a regular basis. To the right of my office, I have an accountant. To the left, I have a psychology professor. Further down, mathematics. Across the hall is management. This mix creates new ideas and new links among our course materials and research interests. In my case, I have spoken on women in leadership at an Academy of Management conference with a colleague in management. Now, of course, the conference was in Hawaii, so that was a bit of a draw, too. But it was nice to be able to work with a colleague in management. That experience taught me a great deal about how the field of management frames questions about gender equity and women and leadership and it influenced the way I talk about these issues in my cultural studies classroom. I cannot imagine having had such an experience at another institution, since the opportunity would have been much harder to cultivate. I have developed a course on women in the law co-taught with a legal studies professor. I've had taken students to Ireland with a mathematics professor. These types of interaction are commonplace at Bryant and indicate the emphasis we place on collegiality and cross-disciplinary work. Now, how does that interdisciplinarity play out in terms of classroom experiences and degree requirements? First and foremost, Bryant's students are grounded in both liberal arts and business learning. Students, whether in the College of Arts and Sciences or in the College of Business, take classes that are rooted in traditional liberal arts education. Business classes, excuse me, business students complete a minor in arts and sciences discipline, and arts and sciences students complete a business administration minor. Both business and arts and sciences students receive a solid general education curriculum in the sciences, social sciences, humanities, and mathematics. This learning occurs not only on the first year level, but all the way through their time at Bryant. Students in business and liberal arts take courses together with each other on a regular basis. I enjoy that my advanced literature and theory courses I, I enjoyed that I know in my advanced literature and theory courses, I will see students who major not only in literary and cultural studies, but they'll be sitting next to students who are majoring in business, like marketing, for instance. Marketing students, because of their interest in the impact images and advertisements have on audiences, often raise questions about the effect of the descriptive passages on the readers of the stories. These are great questions to think about because they lead into discussions about who buys a novel like Dracula, for instance, and what motivates interest in that type of narrative. On the other hand, a literary and cultural studies student who has studied philosophy and ethics, or an environmental science student who has studied sustainability, complicates discussion of business plans and business practices, asking important questions about the impact of one's project on other people, or animals, or ecosystems. The kind of issues that emerge in our classes are complex because of the different critical lenses we bring to bear on the materials we are studying. The student as a whole is strengthened by this integration. But there's an important practicality to this as well, and those of you who have heard me speak before know I like to talk about my sister in this case. My sister is a graphic artist and a writer with degrees in musical performance, graphic art, and fine arts. She has worked on a number of projects that you are probably familiar with, including Jimmy Neutron, Ant Bully, Kung Fu Panda. My sister always talks about how her liberal arts experiences taught her to think critically, to be creative, to see possibilities. But now, she also finds that she spends a good chunk of her time considering the business implications of her work. What's the best way to market her stories is a primary concern. With changing media, 
and the internet, venues of publication just don't function the same old way. And she has found that she has had to become entrepreneurial and think about how she will publish and sell her material. For an artist, knowing about business has always been important. But most often, they have had to learn this by trial and error. Here, we challenge students to learn about the relationship between the intellectual and professional worlds. Secondly, both colleges are committed to developing students' creative capital. We believe that creativity is not something that someone has or does not have, something that someone has to be born with, the artist who all alone writes his poems in the lime tree bower. Such a belief is elitist and neglects to consider the ways in which creativity is something you can learn and must practice. In our courses, you can expect to be challenged to create things using methods you might not initially think of. In my Irish literature course last fall, I asked students to take an author they had read a book by, like James Joyce or some other author, or something they saw, say, in a film about the Troubles in Northern Ireland, and translate that narrative into a visual text. Some students made video texts, others made collages, still others worked with stained glass, or painting, or charcoal drawing, or photography. At the end of the semester, we displayed the work in an event that the campus was invited to. And later, we selected pieces which were displayed at the library. One student told me she had never painted before and wanted to exercise that skill to see what she could do. That type of willing leap into the creative unknown is what we encourage and support. And you might uh, look at the current Bryant website because there's a story about this um, particular experience for, and many of the students who were in the class are highlighted and you can see a little bit more about what we did in that class. But the important thing to know is that this just doesn't happen in my classes. This happens in courses across the disciplines. Students will experience this type of learning from their first business plan in BU 101 and their first creative writing assignment in the liberal arts first year seminar to their senior capstones, their internships, and their advanced general education courses. Finally, we encourage students to think about their purpose in the larger world. In other words, what does it mean to be a global citizen? If I thought my job was just to teach students how to go out and make money, I would probably need to quit because that would not gel with what I fundamentally believe about the purpose of education. What I have found at Bryant is that we think a lot about how we can inspire students to think about the world they live in, and even more so, to think about how they can leave that world a better place. Sure, making money is not a bad thing, but what one does with one's money and how one goes about making that money says a lot about how that person was educated. At Bryant, we strive towards an ethical framework, towards the long view, not the short-term gain. Ideally, we want students to see themselves as global citizens and leaders who can be positive influences on their communities. As you meet many of the faculty and staff at Bryant and many of our students, I think you will see this educated optimism. I encourage you to talk with our faculty about the potential we see in our students and about our understanding of the profound responsibility that we as educators have to them. Thank you, and I look forward to meeting many of you this afternoon.